Our mants are tropical keystone species, meaning many other species rely on them for survival. These impressive predators also have a surprising home life. Colonies of the army ant Aceton burchellia are nomadic. Instead of building permanent homes, they form temporary living nests called bivouacs constructed entirely out of their own bodies. Bivouacs need to be warm and wet enough for young ants to develop properly, but these ants are found across very different habitats in the wild, from high in the mountains to down at sea level. So how do army ant bivouacs keep conditions just right for their brood in such diverse conditions? Army ant queens lay about 10,000 eggs once every six weeks. The eggs develop into larvae, then pupae, then adults. So usually a bivouac is either full of similarly aged larvae or similarly aged pupae. Although new eggs are also laid halfway through the pupal development phase, during which time colonies don't relocate. So bivouacs have distinct stages according to the developmental age of the brood. We tested whether bivouacs thermoregulate differently across these brood stages. An organism is thermoregulating if it keeps its body temperature within a narrow range of temperatures relative to the environment. The opposite, having body temperatures close to ambient temperature, is thermal conformation. Some animals switch between these strategies depending on the situation, and we tested whether bivouacs could switch between thermoconformation and thermoregulation with the group acting as a collective thermoregulator. To measure thermoregulation, we put temperature and humidity loggers inside of bivouacs and outside on the forest floor. Then we compared temperatures between the two. We also left the probes in place until after the bivouacs had moved out to study the conditions of the bivouacking sites without the ants in them. This was done at the top and bottom of the Continental Divide in northern Costa Rica. We found that some bivouacs collectively warmed as much as 10 degrees above empty bivouac site temperature, while others barely warmed at all. How much warming ants did was highly dependent upon how cold it was outside. Bivouacs carefully thermoregulated pupae at all elevations, but bivouacs with larvae were more thermoconforming. This strategy may help high elevation army ant colonies save energy by only warming during developmental stages when it is most needed. When comparing the temperature of empty bivouac sites to ambient temperature after ants had left, we found that site choice was especially important for helping bivouacs stay cool in hot environments. Low elevation ants often chose bivouac sites in abandoned burrows underground where soil buffers temperature extremes. Colonies also chose bivouac sites with high humidity. As climates change and deforestation occurs throughout the tropics, suitably cool and humid bivouac sites may become harder to find, in dry lowland areas especially. This threatens army ants as well as the hundreds of other animal species that rely on their presence to survive.